Welcome to our lecture on line. Sometimes we think of lines and slopes as being very abstract things that have absolutely no usefulness in any way. But it turns out they're extremely useful and they have very nice applications in all kinds of circumstances. So here I thought I'd give you some examples where we can look at to see that yes indeed we can look at lines and slopes and there's some real meaning and purpose behind them. So first graph shows distance versus time. And notice that as time goes on, we're covering more and more distance. So as we're going along this line, the more time elapses, the more distance you've covered. You can see that after one hour, the distance covered is now 60 miles. I'm assuming that someone's doing that in their car, because that would be quite hard to do it walking or running or on a bicycle. So obviously you'd need a car to go that fast. And then you can also see that the slope has a particular representation. The slope actually tells you how fast you're traveling. The faster you're traveling, the steeper the slope, the slower you're traveling, the less steep the slope, meaning if you're traveling on a bicycle, the slope would look like this. If you're in a race car, the slope would look like this. So the slope represents the speed at which you're traveling. In this case, the velocity is 60 miles in an hour or 60 miles per hour. So that's equal to the slope, the rise over the run. You could also have it represent jumping out of an airplane, opening a parachute, and then slowly losing height until you reach the ground. And of course, that takes a certain, a certain amount of time. What does the slope represent in this case? It represents how fast you're coming down with the parachute. And hopefully, you want the slope not to be too steep. If it's too steep, you would hit the ground too fast. You might get hurt. So you want a parachute that will take you down very, very gently, just a few meters per second, so that when you get to the ground, you don't get hurt. Let's say you're driving on a road and you went over a mountain pass on the other side. Here the slope represents how steep the road is. A very big negative slope means that you're dropping very fast and then you get to the point where the road is no longer as steep. So here you can see that the slope simply represents how steep the road is. You can also apply something to, for example, sales and profit and loss and so forth and revenue. Here we have a graph that shows profit versus sales and notice that here the line represents how much profit you make. If you have not very many sales, if you just have a little bit of sales, notice that you're below the line. In other words, you're making negative profit, which is essentially a loss. You're losing money if you can't sell enough. If you have a hamburger stand, you need to sell a certain number of hamburgers before you start making money that day. And so there's what we call a break-even point where the line goes to the positive side instead of the negative side. And after you sell a certain number of hamburgers, then you begin to make a profit that day. So again, the line represents essentially what your profit is versus how many sales you have. And you want to be above the line, as they say. You want to start making profit, so you need to have enough sales to make a profit. And here we have gas in a tank and distance traveled, and this is for two different cars. Notice that they both have a different amount of gas in the tank when you first start out. So when you tank up, some cars can hold more gas, some cars can hold less gas. So here we have two cars, one that holds more gas, one that holds less gas. Then you start driving, and you can see that as you cover distance, you lose gasoline because you burn it up, and eventually, if you keep going, your tank will be empty. Now the slope shows how much gas you use per distance traveled. The steeper the slope, the smaller your gas mileage, the more gas you burn per mile covered, the less steep the slope, the less gas you burn per mile covered. So you can see that this car here has a better gas mileage, this car here has not so good gas mileage. This car starts with more gas in the tank, this car starts with less gas in the tank. So you can see that there's all kinds of examples, I could probably throw another 50 different examples on the board, show all kinds of ways in which we can represent physical things through lines and slopes. And this are just five of those examples to give you some sort of idea how useful it is to talk about lines and slopes. And so now that you understand that these are useful applications, we'll get into the nitty gritty details of how to actually work with lines and slopes in a more sustained fashion. So stay tuned and we'll show you how to do that.